In our headline news, a series of activities including the Heroes Marathon and a Peace Walk are part of the build-up to the commemorations that will mark the fourth anniversary of the passing of Utada Nelson Kholishasa Mandela. Let's cross live now to the Nelson Mandela Foundation out in Houghton where our reporter Ntakwa Nangadana is standing by to speak to the widow of the late Dada Mandela, Grasha Michelle. And of course, just before you go there, Ntakwana, tell us some of the plans that uh, we heard you outline, of course, with Silo Hatanga earlier on, some of the events that have been, uh, of course, uh, proposed to take place during uh, the fourth commemoration of Dada's passing. If you can just uh, take us through those, we understand there's also a marathon that's going to be held in his name. Like him. Correct, Alicia. Well, today really marks the beginning of events that will culminate with the celebrations of the centenary, and that will be on the 18th of July, 2018. You remember that Madiba was born on the 18th of July, 1918. But... Um Event where an, exi an exhibition that is titled, as we spoke to Silo Hadang, the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation earlier today, this exhibition is titled Unthreading Mandela, and uh, the exhibition itself is intended to restore the legacy, to preserve the legacy that is Nelson Mandela um, in the actions, in the person that he was, um, the prisoner, the troublemaker, the comrade, even the president, but remember that he was a father and also a husband. And all of this will come out today. The keynote speaker today will be uh, General Bantu Holomisa, the leader of the UDM, who was at one point a member of the ANC, who was expelled and later formed his own party. But um, also will have a speech from the chairperson of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, and that is Professor Njabulo Ndebele, as well as the chairperson of the interministerial committee that is overseeing all the arrangements of the centenary, and that is Minister Jeff Khadebe. But Alicia, I have the absolute honor and privilege as an African girl to talk to one of um, the women or rather the only rather woman in the world to become a first lady in two countries uh, but she was made first lady in two countries because of one thing and that was love mama grasa tell us about the love um, of madiba for you Actually, I must start saying I am the first lady of Samora and I'm first lady of Madiba, not necessarily of the countries, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now, uh, my journey indeed is that I, I fell in love and uh, two extraordinary uh, men on our continent they also fell in love with me yes. and it's as simple as this yes. it doesn't have anything to do with uh, what they have become as leaders of our countries and he is an icon it has nothing to do with that this is his public life and his contribution to South African nation to Africa to the world but he my relationship with him is as simple as husband and wife. And there are millions and millions of husbands and wives, and we are not different from that. Now, you first met him in 1990, when he went to Mozambique after he was released from prison. And um, what was it like, that first meeting? Adiba was my leader. He was still a myth to me. Uh, he came and uh, we wanted as the Michelles, we want to connect him to Samora. And we had uh, the privilege of uh, having a private moment with him. And we actually bestowed on him one of the just the symbolic uh, things which would make him connect with one of the freedom fighters of Southern Africa. So that was it. And it, it was uh, not anything which I could have dreamed that later it will end up in a relationship. And the day that he passed, the moment that he passed, 
What sort of memories does it bring back? That is very difficult. It's very difficult to talk about it. Because yes, it's four years now, but it, to tell you frankly, ever since this morning, it's as if I'm relieving every moment of that day. From the time the doctors told us, told us that uh, the end was uh, close. And the emotions and the anxiety and, uh, you know, the anticipation of how do you hold him while at the same time you understand that you have to let him go. And it's, um, it's as if it's happening today, although it's four years now. It isn't easy, I have to tell you. Um, one of the things that we know is that while you met Madiba and became First Lady of South Africa, you yourself had your own uh, life before that. You were trained as a Frelimo um, freedom fighter. Um, so how do you continue the legacy of Madiba, especially with the centenary coming up? Perhaps here I'm going to be very specific. Uh, when Madiba was nearing his, the end of his life, he charged me to lead the, the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital. That it was the first legacy very concrete which I could tell myself, I could tell South Africa and the children of this country and children of Africa, we have built a hospital for you and to fulfill something like Madiba's last wish. This is one. The second is Madiba had started to outline what he would like to be the book of his presidential years. He couldn't write it because he was very tired. I summoned his advisors. I asked this foundation to lead the process of writing the presidential years. I'm happy to say the book is already in the bookshop shops. It can be sold. So for me, this is my personal, you know, way of uh, making sure that in future, future generations will have something symbolic to say. This is what Madiba wanted to do. This is just the beginning of conversations with Mama Grasa Michelle. She was the person closest to Madiba as one would expect on the day, this day, when he passed on in 2013 at 2050, as President Jacob Zuma announced. It's back to you, Alicia. Thank you so much. Well reported there at Houghton, of course, in Takwan and Adana. And of course, she was sitting with the widow of the late statesman, Grasha Marshall, who's been recounting her relationship outside of the public, a love relationship that she shared with, of course, the late statesman. And she has urged people to remember him by honoring the values and principles that he stood for.